guys, welcome to today's gig log. I am DJ Alex Brown. In today's gig log, I will be DJing the wedding of James and Kayla here at the Squantum Association in East Providence, Rhode Island. So the wedding today is about 60 guests. I'll be providing services today for the ceremony, cocktail hour, and reception. I'll also be providing a custom monogram, glow tower lighting, up lighting, as well as photo booth for tonight's wedding. So that is almost the biggest package or my premium package that I offer. I just wanted to quickly tell you about how uh, Kayla, the bride for this wedding, came to hire me. Kayla actually heard about me through her cousin. Um, her cousin is Brittany Adams, uh, and she is a wedding photographer. She did uh, my cousin's wedding, uh, as well as another wedding for his wife's family. And uh, so I've worked with her a few times, and she actually recommended me to her cousin for her wedding. I will leave uh, some links to Brittany's social media and website in the description below if you'd like to check her out. Uh, if you're planning on getting married, she's a great choice for your wedding photographer. So we're gonna start by taking a look at the ceremony space. The ceremony is being held here at the clubhouse, which is the building that's right behind me. Uh, I have my typical ceremony set up here today, which is my QSC TouchMix 16 with a single speaker. So because the ceremony was very small today, um, the officiant actually declined to have the uh, wireless lavalier microphone, uh, but we were still doing music. I did actually set the microphone up ahead of time because I was expecting the officiant to use it. Um, and it was only when he told me that I was aware that he didn't want to. So I had already tuned the microphone and everything. When I say tune, what I mean is I go into the EQ on the mixer and I actually go through and find where the mic is going to feed back um, and then tune those frequencies so that it won't feed back because when you have one mic um, and you have to turn it up a little bit, usually lavalier mics feedback. I've heard many, many DJs uh, that I've helped at ceremonies uh, have their mics feedback, and it's something that, uh, with a background in uh, sound, sort of a nitpicky thing for me. So I try and make sure that the microphone is always tuned really, really well so that it doesn't feed back and so that it sounds good. So ceremony audio, especially the microphones, is very important to me. And if you're a bride or groom watching this video, I'm sure it's probably pretty important to you as well. So as we head over to take a look at the cocktail hour and reception space, uh, I'm going to show you the photo booth. Uh, we have a prop table, of course, set up with all the props for the photo booth, as well as uh, the enclosed photo booth. Uh, this year I did start offering a second background option. Uh, you may know that previously I only offered a red velvet background. I now offer a silver sparkly backdrop. For tonight's wedding, Kayla chose the red background as she felt that it went better with her wedding colors. No photo booth would be complete without having prints. Um, on all my wedding packages I offer unlimited prints for the photo booth. This is a custom designed photo booth template for this wedding. A lot of brides lately have been just choosing a photo booth template off of Etsy, uh, happy to spend $10 on you know a pre-made photo booth template if it's something that you like. So now we are going to take a look uh, more of the DJ and lighting set up in the reception room. As you can see, we have 10 up lights placed around the room to um, accent some of the features of this beautiful venue. One thing that I personally really like about the Squantum Association is that um, it's a really historic venue and you feel like it's a historic venue when you're inside. One thing that I noticed right off the bat um, was that it wasn't over restored. A lot of times when I'm at like historic venues, uh, they're over restored to the point that it doesn't really feel historic anymore. It feels like it's kind of been renovated. Um, so I think that this venue has really, really nice character. Um, as a historic venue. Additionally, we have the glow tower lighting and I have the monogram mounted on top of one of the towers projecting onto the dance floor as there's not really anywhere else to project it in this room. Kayla also went with the keepsake necklace. Just to explain what that is, custom monogram uses a steel, what's called a gobo, which is a laser cut piece of steel that the light shines through to make your custom monogram. Um, and I take that after and actually have it gold or silver plated to match whatever the couple's wedding bands are. And then um, I add a chain to that to turn it into a necklace and send it to the bride after the wedding. So it's a nice little keepsake and sort of charm necklace that you get after the wedding. And it is included with my custom monogram. I also have my little letterboard sign on the table just with the bride and groom's names. It helps to hide some of the equipment on my table and also gives a visual feature. Uh, a lot of guests, brides, 
Um, even photographers love this sign. They love to take pictures of it. So um, it's just a little thing that I throw in with my wedding packages. Helps me keep my setup looking a little neater and it also is a little bit um, special to the bride and groom. So at this venue here, we do actually have a dock for the venue, free for anyone to use uh, for weddings and such. They also offer um, a charter service. You know, if you happen to have a boat, you could bring your boat here for the wedding and then say, go down to Newport or go up into Providence after the wedding. So as we head over to take a look at the cocktail hour and reception, um, I just wanted to mention that um, heading down, we actually had uh, a cannon launch that was nobody knew about except the bride and groom um, until it actually happened. So everybody was stopped, the bride and groom lit the cannon. Um, obviously there was no cannonball in it um, for safety reasons. Just another sort of historic thing that kind of goes along with this thing. So right now we're gonna head into uh, the reception. So we just finished up with the uh, wedding party introductions. It was just the bride and the groom tonight. Uh, there wasn't any best man, maid of honor, or bridesmaids, anything like that. Directly following the introduction of the bride and the groom, uh, we had the couple's first dance. Um, and then right after that, we had the father-daughter dance. And then the father of the bride um, gave a blessing and we just started with uh, some food for dinner. What was interesting is the father of the bride um, who's been communicating with us um, pretty much the whole wedding day that we've been here. Uh, gave me a compliment that he liked how I introduced the bride and the groom. Um, and the father of the bride is actually, uh, he used to be a DJ um, before becoming, I believe he's a pastor now. You know, it was nice to uh, have a little chat with him um, about his experience DJing. And, um, you know, it was also nice to receive some praise that he liked uh, the setup that we have going on and the way that kind of I announce things. So always nice to get a little compliment like that. I'm also gonna introduce quickly uh, Adam, who is my assistant for this evening. I'm gonna ask him to come around for a second. I know him uh, through another DJ who's actually his godfather. Uh, when he showed interest in doing private events, uh, I offered to bring him along to some weddings and private events that I have to uh, kind of help him learn some uh, DJ skills and how to make announcements and things like that. So hopefully you're getting some value out of that uh, yeah. coming along to events. So always happy to you know help out um, an up and coming DJ or someone who wants to get into the industry. We're actually gonna head uh, back inside now and we'll see you back uh, with some dancing and we'll do a quick recap at the end of the video. Okay guys, so we're just wrapping up this video. You can see we're almost done cleaning everything up behind me. It's actually only 11.30, which means it took us only a half an hour to get to this point. We will easily be out of here within an hour's time frame, which is a really fast cleanup time. Thank you to Adam, my helper and cameraman for the night. Uh, he was an integral part in helping me get everything broken down as quickly as we did. We had a pretty good dancing. Um, it was initially a little tough to get people on the dance floor because it was such a small crowd and there's really um, a lot of different ages and kind of different music tastes in the crowd. By a couple songs in, we had pretty much everybody on the dance floor, so that was really good. So we did have um, kind of spontaneously dropped on me. Uh, there was a magic show um, or an illusionist that performed that I guess was uh, a friend of a family member. Um, and she had a really cool show, um, but I don't necessarily like when things are just kind of dropped on me like five minutes before they want something to happen. Um, you know, she wanted 
special music and a special announcement and I always prefer that you know people let me know things ahead of time you know I'm never opposed to like last minute changes to timeline or anything like that besides that the wedding went very well Kayla was very happy um, the bride and came over and thanked me after so um, once again congratulations to James and Kayla um, thank you guys for watching this video uh, make sure to check out the links in the description to the venue, uh, photographer, and of course to my website. That's going to wrap this one up. Please consider liking the video, uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel um, to stay up to date. That's going to be it for this one. Peace.